Welcome to another intriguing episode of All Things Mysterious, the podcast where all the realms of true crime, supernatural, and the unexplained converge. I'm your host, Jordan. I'm Matt. We're ready to plunge into today's fascinating mysteries. Let's dive right in. I'm going to make a lot of you angry, <laughs> especially you. <sighs> I mean, one of those days. It is. Where's my anxiety medicine and my blood pressure medicine? I think I'm going to need it To today. get you a stress ball, specifically oh. for my true crime episodes. <laughs> so the episode I've got for you today is a case where police really handled just about everything wrong. And the look that Matt is giving me. <laughs> yeah, I was actually going to do a true crime one this week that I decided I'm going to do next week. But it's the same exact thing where it's just... The police did everything wrong, and I'm so glad I didn't do it this week now. Yeah, and we're pretty sure that because of how badly they handled things, a young woman lost her life. Mytrice Richardson, by all accounts, was a really wonderful person. She was 24 years old and recently graduated college with a degree in psychology. Actually, she was the first in her family to go to college and graduate, so that's really cool. She was really close with her family, but seemed especially close with her great-grandmother, who she made a point to have dinner with every single Wednesday. And this is more or less where the odd series of events began. On Wednesday, September 16th, 2009, she told her great-grandmother that she would need to skip dinner that night as she had other plans, which according to her great-grandmother didn't seem like that big of a deal, nor did it seem like something to be super concerned about, but she just said, okay, sounds good. Let her go to dinner. I'm already not on this girl's side. What kind of person cancels dinner with their grandmother? You know, that's a really good question, but maybe there was a good reason. There's never a good reason. She's old. She doesn't have many dinners left. I don't know how old she is. I think she was like 91. Oh, yeah, she's evil. Not the grandma. Yeah, I think she was like 91 years old, but uh, apparently she really didn't think anything of it. Oh, she's already got a strike in my book, so. Fair. Mytrice then drove to a restaurant called Joffrey's in Malibu, California, which in itself was a little bit odd as she didn't really know the area and she was by herself. She grew up in the suburbs of Los Angeles and went to college in Fullerton, but really didn't spend any time in Malibu. The restaurant had a full valet service, and this is where her behavior starts to get really weird. The valet told her he would park the car ahead of her and be back to park hers next. But when he got back, Mytrice was sitting in his personal vehicle, I guess it was just sitting really close by, and he asked her what she was doing, and she responded, it's subliminal. Then she muttered a couple of odd things that he really couldn't make sense of, something along the lines of Michael Jackson, And then she asked if someone named Vanessa was working, handed him her keys, and they went inside. The valet handed her off to the hostess, making sure to tell the hostess she was acting really odd and to keep an eye on her. But they still seated her, she ordered an alcoholic drink, and a $60 steak. $60 steak? What the hell? It was a really fancy restaurant. I hope so. What kind of alcohol? Uh, It was some sort of mixed drink. Why would you ruin a good steak with a mixed drink? I mean, that's That's, what girls do. That's strike two. Strike two? Okay, I should also (laughs) mention she was wearing jeans and a t-shirt. Is that important? I don't know. I just feel like I personally wouldn't go to a super fancy restaurant in jeans and a t-shirt, but I also don't know the restaurant. So, like, maybe that was normal. I have no idea. I mean, I don't think I've gone in anything but a jeans and t-shirt to a restaurant, so... I'll take But one. a restaurant with $60 steaks, steaks. and a valet service? I, to be fair, these days, that's probably the going rate for steak. You're not horribly wrong, especially in California. At one point during the meal, she asked a nearby table if she could join them. And according to them, she was just talking complete nonsense. More about Michael Jackson, something about astrological signs, 
and some things she said were more like words that just didn't even make sentences. This would actually end up being really important to the investigation because the people at this table could back up the valet's claims of her super odd behavior, and this was absolutely not normal behavior for her. But as the other table left, Maitrice tried to leave as well and was stopped by the waitstaff because her bill wasn't paid. She actually made a little bit of sense here, saying she thought the other table covered it, but then she said, I am busted. Then it gets weirder. She apparently told them she was from Mars and she had no money and offered to settle her bill with sex. I have no idea where to even begin with that. So. I told you it was a weird one. So she's from Mars and has no money, but yet she knows about sex and she's going to settle her bill with sex. Well, right, because like every now and then something she would say would make perfect sense. Like, I'm busted. And then like she understood the idea that another table that she was sitting with that she decided to invite herself to was going to cover her bill. But then she would speak complete nonsense. And so it was really, really weird. Everyone just thought her behavior was so odd. You want to watch me offend a whole group of people? I can't wait. I mean, she liked Michael Jackson, so she's obviously pretty weird anyways. Oh, that's really going to get you in deep with some people. <laughs> I wait for your comments. That is when the restaurant called the police. They told them that she was refusing to pay the bill and that she may be on drugs, which is a fair assumption at this point, and asked them to come pick her up. The police asked her who they should call to pay the bill, and she said her parents were dead, which is not true. Later on in this episode, you're going to hear a lot from her parents. So they called her great-grandmother, who, at the age of 91, had no idea how to pay the bill over the phone because they required a signature and to be honest with you even now like this was in I think 2009 and I know I can't figure that out like back then I think they would have had to have faxed it or something and yeah she had no way to get that figured out she ended up going into police custody now the police did do a sobriety test and actually she passed she was perfectly sober. But because of the bill, they went ahead and detained her for the night, impounded the car, which they found marijuana inside of, and took her to the station. At this point, her great-grandmother was concerned and called her mom and explained the situation. And her mom was just absolutely super floored by her behavior. But because she lived like 60 miles away and it was late, she also had a 10-year-old at home. She couldn't exactly just go leave everything and pick her up. She called the police herself and asked when Maitrice would be let out of the station, basically released. They told her that she would be in custody till morning. So Latrice figured she'd be safe until morning, went to bed, and that's when things went horribly wrong. Latisse, her mom, was up at 5.30 the next morning and called to check up on Maitrice and was told they had let Maitrice go in the middle of the night. Around 12.15 a.m., they let her go with no cell phone, no money, just her car keys, no way of contacting anybody in a completely unfamiliar town when she was acting super odd. So do you think she told the police the same story that she told their waiter and offered to pay her bailable sex? There is no record of that, but they really just said she was acting odd. She did leave early, so I'm guessing the bail was paid. <laughs> I don't think she actually had bail. I was saying that they either just release her or something. So later in the episode, I go over this a little bit, but they basically admitted to having no reason to keep her. She did walk out on a bill. That is a crime. I agree. I'm wondering if maybe her mom called and settled the bill and we just, I somehow skipped over that and I couldn't find it somewhere or maybe the restaurant dropped the charges Something's odd here. Just They usually don't let prisoners out in the middle of the night. It usually has to be after they, they get held. It usually has to be after they talk to the judge. And so the whole thing was just really odd. And she actually had a conversation with them the night before, and she had been joking with them about, I just don't want my daughter being let go in the middle of the night and get her head chopped off. And then to actually call the next morning and for her to actually be let go in the middle of the night with straight up nothing in a town she's unfamiliar in, she was so freaked out. Oh no, is this foreshadowing? Slightly. 
Okay. Because I feel sorry for this girl, I'm going to take off the stripe. So generous of you. Obviously, her mom and dad tried to find her, but that proved pretty difficult because they wouldn't give her any video or anything like that. Latisse tried filing a missing persons report, but unfortunately for her, and I know Matt and I have probably screamed about this before, you can file a missing persons report immediately. There is no waiting period. But Latisse didn't know this. And when the deputy she spoke to recommended to wait a few hours, she agreed. That is honestly the one thing that people who listen to this podcast, I want them to learn. If a cop ever tells you that they have to wait to file a missing person report, tell them they're lying and they're full of shit. Please you tell them You do not have to wait. There is yeah. no 24-hour waiting period. And I, I don't know who I blame more, the, the cops for that or like TV shows and stuff that always did that. But this is what you guys got to remember. That is a plot point to move the plot forward. It is not real life. But somehow it just, it seems like it caught on to basically mainstream where everybody, all the cops started using it when they didn't want to actually do their job, basically. And don't get me wrong. I'm sure that there are plenty of cases where, I don't know, somebody ran away for a couple of hours and so many people panicked in their home, I don't know, two hours later. Mm. But at the same time, like if somebody is missing, you need to get started on that right friggin' away. Yeah. Like right now, because in a missing person's case, you need to get started right then because... There's no time to wait. No. If something's happened to them, you need to get on that right freaking now. No. But I've... then you wait and leads are lost. Yeah. Evidence is lost. If they're outside, the longer they're outside, the more evidence that's gone. And look at my trace. She just, she had nothing on her. There's no telling what could have happened. She left to the police station and there's nothing to go on here at this point. They needed to start on that instantaneously. But instead, they were like, no, you should just wait a few hours. I'm sure she'll just find her way home somehow, even though it's, I think, 60 miles away. Sure. Yeah. Even though she doesn't have money, she doesn't have a cell phone. She has keys to her car that's impounded 15 miles away, I think, at that point, that she has basically no access to. How? In Dude. what way is that ever going to work? Cop reminds me of the guy that of 10 minutes before they got to go home and they just don't want to do any more work. So just come back in about 30 minutes and fill out a report after I'm gone and I don't have to do anything. Honestly, that's what it sounds like to me. And it's horrible. And I'm sure that they probably feel super guilty about it now. But at the same time, come on, man. Just do what you need to do. I don't know. To be fair, that guy, the guy who did that was probably does it all the time and doesn't even care. I hope that their policies have changed after this. Probably not. Around 6.30 a.m. that morning, remember, she woke up at 5.30, so it was about an hour later, the police received a report of a person roughly matching Mitrice's description, a slim black woman with Afro hair, about six miles away, trespassing through a ranch. The ranch owners had called, they'd spoken to her, asked if she was okay, and she said she was just resting, but then she disappeared again. The police didn't issue a bolo, be on the lookout, until six and a half hours later. Two days after her disappearance, the case was transferred to LAPD, and they sent out search dogs where they thought Mitrice was spotted at that ranch. And sure enough, her scent was actually tracked there. Unfortunately, the dogs lost the scent, and they did have trackers, and they were able to follow some of her footprints, but they couldn't figure out where she went past a certain point. So LAPD decided to research her car, they found journals, and her entries were concerning to say the least. They also looked at her Facebook and MySpace posts, oh, MySpace, which led them to believe she was really not in a good headspace. A lot of people believe that she may have been suffering from a manic bipolar episode, but obviously we really can't be sure. Basically, her posts were a lot of the same exact bizarre things that we were hearing from her at the restaurant, just utter nonsense. Latisse and her ex-husband Michael, which was Mitrice's dad, asked to see the footage of her being let go from the station to see her state of mind, where she went, anything like that, and they told her they did not have footage of it. Eventually, 
four months after she was released and went missing. After they went to the media and all that fun stuff and put pressure on them, they finally admitting to having tape of her being let go. So finally, after four months, they decided to release the footage. Basically, yes. I've got so much to say that I don't get this at all. And the, this is a recurrent theme even today where if you're not guilty of something, you wouldn't try to hold the footage back. That's my opinion. Exactly. I, I don't get it because if they had nothing to hide, they would release the footage immediately. There'd be no reason not to. So by them withholding it, they're basically telling the world, hey, we did something wrong. We don't want you to look at this. I could un even understand them slightly withholding it for court or something like that. But to say originally they didn't even have it. Yeah. No, we don't even have footage of that. And then to come back four months later after pressure from the media and then be like, actually, we do. Excuse me? Right. Okay, so you've just decided not to help at all then. Thank you. That's great. So you're just completely not helping at all to find this young woman. Yeah. Thanks. Regardless, they definitely have something to hide on. That's the only reason they were trying to hide the footage. So I should also note that this exact police station once arrested Mel Gibson. When they let him go, he got a ride to his car. Makes me wonder if they're a touch racist. I get that he's a celebrity. Yeah. I do. But at the same time, it does make you wonder. Just I mean, a little bit. And I'm let me tell you, the media had a heyday with that. And they used that in the pressure to get them to release the footage. They were like, she's a young black woman, and you just release her in the middle of the night. But this white man who can completely take care of himself, you took him to his car? It's weird just uh, the fact that even the media was so interested in this case. Her parents had a lot to do with that. Not saying that's a bad thing. I'm really, No, they thing, were amazing. Especially, what, in 2009? Nowadays, it wouldn't be. 15 years ago was a different time. Yeah, it was. Not surprisingly, Latisse and Michael ended up filing a couple lawsuits against the police department, basically saying they failed to keep her safe and that they probably should have brought her to their car, things like that. There are a couple of things that I can say I understand why the police did what they did. I will say that. She passed the sobriety test. She was not drunk. And they also don't have a frame of reference on her behavior. Was she acting odd? Yes. But how odd was odd for her? They really couldn't tell that. Releasing her in the middle of the night really wasn't smart. But they also, supposedly, we can't really verify this, offered her a phone call before releasing her, and she said no. If that's the truth, it's not always on her. So aside from that, when they released her, not every single thing is on them. However, I still do think a lot of it was on them and how they handled it, but there's still more coming. I'm gonna put that out there because there's still so much more coming. And her parents did end up winning the lawsuit and the police are supposedly reevaluating their procedures. All right, so first off, just because she passed the sobriety test, I assume probably a breathalyzer too. Mm -hmm. There are other substances that could be impairing her judgment. We all know this. So in order to find out what substances that may be, they would have to do a blood test. The results wouldn't have been back in. So they could have held her just for the suspicion on that alone. And that would have, have, yeah. That would have been the safe thing to do. Oh, I hate the case already. I told you it'd make you mad. <laughs> you don't release a young girl at midnight, one o'clock, whatever time it was, in the middle of the night. I don't care how old she is. You make sure she's safe. And she was so pretty. Yeah. Dear God, she was so freaking pretty. Not that makes it any better or any worse, but like she was stunning. I, I just don't get their mentality. Me as a person, if I was that cop releasing her, there is no way that I could just release her and be like, eh, not my problem anymore. I, I don't see how, as a human with any kind of empathy, empathy towards another human, how they could just do that. And I think that's exactly why her parents won the lawsuit. Honestly, like, I'm glad they did. I don't know how much the police department had to pay. Probably not enough. I believe it was 900000 Not nearly enough. No, how, there's not any, there's no amount that can pay for a life. No. no, it's 
going to go on a small little rant here because I've heard this a lot that when these families sue the police departments, they'll be like, oh, you should be okay. You got all this money from the police department. You should be happy. I'm like, money doesn't replace your loved ones. Doesn't and it, replace your emotional damage from yeah. that. And it's not about the money. It, it, to me, if I had a loved one that was killed by the police, I would sue the crap out of them. I wouldn't even care how much. I would go for as much possible, not because I want the money, but because I want that police department to hurt. That's exactly it. Yeah, that's what needs to happen. And I'm not going to go say that all every time someone gets killed by the police, it's wrong or it's bad. Or it was unjustified. No, there are plenty of times where it is justified. But it, in an instance like this, let's focus it on this instance here. Whether you want to just argue or not, the police's actions led to whatever happened to her. They were we, negligent. That That's the plain and simple. Their actions led to whatever happened, which we haven't got to that part yet. But I'm assuming it's not going to end up happy. True crime case. It's not a happy ending. <laughs> There might be that one, the one case I did was a happy ending when the town killed the bully. Was that though? Yeah. I would say it was a happy ending. Debatable. Not for him, but. <laughs> See, debatable. <laughs> for the town it was. I am really trying here. This pisses me off because a life was lost because of stupidity, basically. Hold her until morning. Make sure her friends or someone picks her up. Even if she's acting odd, that would have been enough to put her have a 72 hour cycle. cycle. Yep. Obviously, from what you're saying, if they talk to her for five minutes, they could tell something's not right. Yep. I agree entirely. And this kind of goes to the backside of my argument is that police are not psych- psychologists. They do not have the training. They should not be handling situations like this. They need to let the people who actually have it work this all the time handle it. So she should have immediately been handed over to a psych hospital and been evaluated. Honestly, if they would have done that, she probably would still be alive today. 100% because she was not okay. Something was going on with her. We don't know what it was exactly, but something was going on with her. Probably mentally. 100%. Messed up. They should have got a lot bigger fine than what they did. But then, Mitrice was found on August 9th, 2010, in a place called Dark Creek. There used to be a marijuana farm, and rangers had been sent to ensure the farm was still not operational. Now, this is not a place you stumble onto. It is a place that you have to find, which makes sense for a marijuana farm. As the rangers were searching and making sure that no plants were growing, they found partially skeletal, partially mummified remains. The body was naked, but clothing was found in bushes nearby. And pretty quickly after that, with dental records, they were able to positively identify them as Mitrice Richardson. Now, after the medical examiner took a look, they determined she had been there for at least six months, possibly the entire time that she had been missing. But it does not get better from here because police did not handle the remains correctly. Not only did deputies move the body before the coroner and or ME got there after specifically being told not to, but they never tested her clothing for any sort of evidence. Honestly, I was thinking a couple minutes ago that you can't make me any madder than I already am. Oh, but I told you it would get worse. I was wrong. How many cases have we done where incompetence has like literally let a killer go oh several too many to count this is probably worse than the oklahoma place that we talked about i don't know that one was bad this is starting to get just as it's bad, getting though. close but i, mean, I yeah like I, i'm not a cop but don't they tell you on day one not to touch the body until the coroner tells you can yeah even i know that and we're just normal people who are not cops Maybe these cops need to watch CSI more. (laughs) Maybe. I don't know the answer to that, but uh, there are also not records or photos, really, of the scene. Now, the rangers took a couple, which is smart of them. Good job, buddies. But that's about it. Uh, No photos, no evidence. Move the body. Basically, these cops were just not doing everything they could to make sure that this case was never, never solved. 
Yeah. And personally feel that it's because they have a lot of guilt about it because they screwed all of it up. They're making it look even worse. I smell. They're hiding it. To me, it's screaming so one of their fellow officers was involved and they're trying to help cover it up. You don't, okay. They could be new cops that were, did this. Maybe there was a new detective assigned to the case. Maybe he wasn't, was very new. I'm going to give him a little bit of the benefit of the doubt there. Supposedly, they didn't want animals to get to them at night, which I think is funny because the remains had been there for well over six months and were still there. How, how, where the hell is the uh, friggin' the coroner should have been taking that long to get there? I don't know, man. I don't know. It right. apparently is a really rugged little place that's difficult to get to. So going back, so we actually do have evidence of her leaving the PlayStation, right? Yes. Are we sure? Yes. Okay. Just saying, this is starting to really smell like a cover-up. Nope. We actually have evidence of her leaving. And we have evidence um, of her being at that house as well. But we still don't have, that doesn't necessarily clear the cops from, I just, I, it is, this is really like, really smelling of cover-up. And that maybe I'm just biased or maybe I'm just I pissed just off at these cops. a million questions. A well, million. I do too, but maybe you'll answer some of them, so. No, probably not. Probably not. But go on anyways. Mitrice's death is currently listed as unknown causes, and it's still open. But is it really being investigated? Is it really, though? We know her state of mind wasn't right, but why was she naked? Why? There are no photos of the scene to see if her clothes were folded, if they were thrown, or what state they generally were in. Um, supposedly, the jeans had been zipped and buckled and her bra was clasped. It's still completely possible that someone did something to her, which I think is 100% possible. But if they did, will her parents ever know? Will we ever know exactly why her behavior was so odd before her death? Was it cold enough for hypothermia to take place? I thought about that too. It was September in Malibu, so the general weather over there is pretty mild. Now, the trek to where she was was difficult to get to, and we're, I'm trying to figure out exactly how she could have gotten over there, because a lot of people also believe that she could not have actually gotten there herself. It's about eight miles, but the terrain over there is basically mountains. It's not actually mountains, but it's close enough to it. Now, this is in the middle of the night, and obviously it would have been a couple of days at least, probably. But she would have been probably hungry, dehydrated, and eight miles isn't really that far. I've walked that in a day. But when you add in all of the terrain she would have had to have gone over, a lot of people think that she was taken there and dumped especially because of the location itself being so hidden away. So maybe she did get there by herself. Maybe in her weird mindset, she hiked there and somehow just managed to get to the creek by herself. But if that was the case, why were her clothes off? There was a creek close by. And don't get me wrong, I know there are like wild animals and stuff out there that could have killed her, but no bones were missing. None of them were marked up by animals, which also is super odd considering she'd been out there for at least six months. So it's just really weird to try and figure out exactly what happened to my trees. Some people also think it's possible that she had an anaphylactic reaction to an animal or a poisonous plant, which may account for some of that, but I know personally, if my throat felt like it was closing up, don't get me wrong, yeah, I probably would take my shirt off in a panic, but if I was taking off the rest of my clothes, I wouldn't like zip them back up and clasp them all before I put them back down. If that's true anyway. We have to go by what law enforcement says they found because they did not follow proper procedure. And in the end, we probably will never actually know what happened to my trees. Because that's all that we really know about the whole case. And it is still an open case at this point. Just cold, unfortunately. Okay. In the rank of cases that you've told me about the piss me off this is definitely high up there not I the top it would be not the top because it doesn't involve children but still pretty high up there whoa i'm sorry it still screams cover up to me 
like a police officer was involved and they're trying to protect their own, which is not unheard of. No, it's not. And it's definitely not out of the realm of possibility either. It just, to be that bad at your job is almost like a parody. It's not possible for someone to be that bad. So it gets to the point where if they're that bad, are they just acting like they're that bad to get rid of evidence? I don't know. It sucks that we'll probably never know, mostly because they don't probably don't even have any evidence to even figure out what happened. I assume the coroner never actually, did he ever list a cause of death? No, Um, it's unknown because there were no marks or anything on her bones and they really couldn't find anything aside from that. So it's unknown. I hate these cases, and but obviously they fascinate me a lot, but at the same time, they're horrible for the families to be able to, to never to know what happened. Granted, the family's semi-lucky because at least they were able to bury right. her body. At least they were able to bury her, say their goodbyes, but it's just horrible because it never should have happened in the first place. No. Ever. R- really shouldn't have. And that's the part that kills me because... It was so easily preventable. A lot of people failed in this. And I'll say not necessarily just her, just the cops. I would even say a little bit of the mom. Oh, yeah. And she feels, I can't oh, imagine I, I, the guilt she feels on that. And that's why I'm not going to put a whole lot of this on her because she has to live with that. But I just, I don't. And maybe it's because my girls are younger. Maybe when they get older, I'll think differently. But just... Right now, if my girl, if my daughter was in jail for something, I'd be going to pick her up. I don't care what time of day it is, what kind of time of whatever else I got going on. Yeah. In an interview, basically, she said that at the time she just thought, okay, my daughter's being stupid and she's real drunk. She can sleep that off in the jail cell for the night. And don't get me wrong. I can understand that. I can. I can, I can too, but. At the same time, you get drunk and you do something stupid or you just get drunk, whatever. Being in a jail cell is not the ideal place and it's not going to change any behavior, really. No, it's embarrassing. And I think that's really kind of what she was going for. Okay, she'll look back at this and be like, okay, that was stupid and I won't do it again. Obviously, she never thought this would happen. That's why I'm not going to put a whole lot of blame on her or anything. I just... And I know it's easier to look through your own perspective and say Monday morning quarterback it. And I I don't want to necessarily do that to her, but because she obviously went through hell, still going through hell. You lose a child. That's something that you never get over. No, it's not. And I do get it. I really do. Because it's middle of the night. Everyone says at the police station who you're supposed to trust that they're going to keep her till morning. And then you call first thing in the morning, 530. And they're like, no, we let her go. You're supposed to be able to trust them, and then they completely fail you. To be fair, you probably should never really. Yeah, we learned that now. (laughs) We know that now. Obviously, she doesn't anymore, and they have an incredibly rocky relationship through the entire time of the case, and I'm sure that she still has a rocky relationship with them now, but I just can't even imagine. I know we're a little cynical because we, we look at a lot of true crime, and many instances in these true crime it's because police officers just don't do their job well enough in so many of these true crime cases it's because police detectives law enforcement somebody out there has royally screwed up and something could have been done plain and simple and they didn't and before everybody gets offended i'm not saying all cops are bad i know there are good cops and we've talked about many of them on these episodes Oh, absolutely. I'm really close friends with several who I would trust with my life because they're phenomenal people. But I want to make that clear, too, that we praise the ones that deserve it and we will roast the crap out of the ones that don't. Oh, yeah. You remember the one from the case you were just talking about earlier? The Welch? Ken Rex McElroy case. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, That guy was a way better man than I ever would be. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And there's been several other instances where we cops actually tried to do everything they could. They just circumstances didn't allow them to but they still did everything they could 100 percent. it's just sometimes like the times when law enforcement fails i'm sorry but we're gonna highlight the crap out of it Uh, fails because of their stupidity or their fails uh, yeah because uh, pretty much every cop that we've talked about on here have failed but they did some of them did everything they could not to fail 
And then you got the ones like to just released an entire crime scene the day of. They got their badges from a Cracker Jack box. I don't know. But I just want to make that clarification. So these cops definitely suck. At least the ones involved in this case. Yeah. Thankfully, the lawsuit made them pay a crap ton of money, which I think probably should have been higher. Yeah. Oh, totally. But the only place that you can hit these people a lot of the time is the wallet for it to hurt. Yeah, you can't. We've seen even today that it's hard to prosecute a cop. So sometimes civil is the only thing you got. I don't blame him at all. I would have done the same thing. I would have absolutely done the same thing. And of course, I'm petty as fuck, so <laughs> I would not stop until I, I do everything I could to make this police department remember. I'd buy a billboard right next to their police station and mm-hmm. put her picture on it. I would every bus bench, every fucking bus in the county would have her picture on it. Oh, I would do everything. I'd send them daily flyers place flyers on their cars have a harassment suit against you but you know what worth it it would be worth it but like i said like matt said the good ones out there we will absolutely appraise those because and don't get me wrong we only cover a lot of these episodes because the work on them was so bad and so you're going to hear a lot more about those and you're going to hear a lot less of the ones when the work was really terrible (laughs) That's one thing. I will always be consistent. I will always call out the bad ones and praise the good ones. If they do a good job, they should get praised. But if they do a crappy job, they definitely shouldn't. So from now on, the cops who do crappy jobs, they are officially Chester. And what do we always say about Chesters? Fuck Fuck Chester. Chester. Thank you for joining us on this journey through all things mysterious. Your engagement is what makes this so rewarding. If you've enjoyed uncovering these mysteries with us, please show your support by liking, subscribing, and following us on your favorite listening platform. For more intriguing content and ways to stay connected, don't forget to check us out on our links in the description below. Your involvement is the key to unlocking more thrilling mysteries. As always, we keep you guessing.